musical arena for all nations.
sing it. I'm chasing. I'm chasing after you. Sing it till you no believe it in your heart. No do. matter where life will take me.
my God, this afternoon, oh God, we come praising you. We come giving you all the honor. We come giving you all the praise. We come giving you all the glory, my God, because you deserve it, oh God. You deserve our praises this afternoon, oh God. So as we come in your presence, oh God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, oh God. We magnify your name this afternoon. We bless your name this afternoon. We call you Abba Father this afternoon because you deserve the glory. You deserve the praise, oh God. So Father, this afternoon, we give you all the glory, the praises, and the honor that is true unto your most and holy name. We worship you, oh magnificent Father. We worship you, ancients of days. My God, as we in your presence, oh God, we worship you, oh God. We give you the glory, oh God. We give you the praises, oh God. That is true unto your holy name, oh God. We say thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Soul winning. Soul winning. All things are possible indeed. We are praying from the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 14. It says, and he said, my presence, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. So this afternoon we are praying in this month of manifestation that the Lord will go with us. His presence will bring us to peace and His presence will give us rest throughout our journey to the promised land. Everything that He have already prepared and everything that He have already done for us. We are praying this afternoon and we are telling the Lord, Father, oh God, give, let the manifestation of your presence, oh God, go with us, oh God, on our journey, oh God, and give us rest, oh God, as you take us into your promises, oh God. May your presence go with me, oh God. So somebody open up the mouth and tell the Lord, as you are about to manifest in our lives, oh God, as we are about to go out on our journey, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh Oh God, may you give us peace. May you give us rest on our journey. Oh God, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, and Moses said, if your presence, if you are not going with me, if your presence is not going with me, I am not going. So Father, Lord God, we decree and declare, oh God, your presence go with us and our journey to the promised land. Whatever that you promise us, whatever you proclaim, whatever you said, oh God, it shall be done, oh God, because your presence are with us. Our journey, oh God, will be peaceful. We will have rest, oh God, and every side, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for the rest, oh God, that you have laid upon us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for those of you who are watching us online tonight. We thank you for those of you who are in the presence of the Lord tonight. As Moses said, if your presence is not going, he is not going with us. So definitely, we know that the presence of the Lord is in this house. Those of you who is watching online, we know that the atmosphere is created. That the presence of the Lord is in your house today. You driving in your vehicle, your, his presence is there. So we thank God for his presence this afternoon. Hallelujah. As we are about to go into the thank our thanksgiving this afternoon, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, it said, But thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we know that the Lord has given us victory, we give thanks back unto him for every victory that he has given unto us. Every time we go out and we go in, he grants us access, he grants us peace, he grants us love and joy. So today as we take our thanksgiving, knowing that every victory is already won, we take it and we come before the throne of grace. Oh God, with a grateful and a joyful heart in the presence of the Lord tonight, this afternoon. And we say thank you, Lord, for the victory. Let your thanksgiving be a praise of victory unto the Lord this afternoon. So as you come forth, come with a shout of victory this afternoon. In Jesus' name.
Welcome to the Holy Ghost night. I believe that this is a time, a set time for you to enter into a higher realm. And I believe that today God has a word for you. Wherever you are, please don't count yourself out of the blessing. Make sure you count yourself in the blessing by taking your thanksgiving. Your thanksgiving is your gratitude to God. It's to say, God, I am ready for more. Please go again and right now go ahead the, 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 the giving lines are there and the website is there. Please do it and do it with great joy. Thank you. God bless you. Continue to watch. This announcement is for all the couples at Miracle Arena. Mark your calendar, July 27th. There will be a romantic getaway. The Sailors of Love boat cruise will disembark for a night of romance, love, fellowship, and an overall good time. Please visit the bookstore for more information. Eat what is on the table if you don't learn how to bring people to God. The surplus of God is given to those who understand the principle. When your mind is on souls, God's mind is on it. Because the place for every believer is right before the table. But you cannot access the table with prophecy. So win it. It makes you come to a place of realization that it's not just praying. It's about partaking, partnership. You are armed not with weapon but with wisdom. You cannot win a soul without becoming wise. Because soul winning must be consistent to keep the fuel and the fire burning. But when God speaks to your mind, in your heart, it turns into fire. If you become a soul winner, you are setting yourself up to have a cleaner heart. Sending is what brings provision. On the table, all things are there. Plenty things. Several things becomes possible for you. Fast and let the Holy Ghost touch your tongue before you talk to men. Soul winning. Miracle Arena put your hands together as we now receive the Lord's servant, His Excellency, Prophet Dr. Kofi Dancer.
your hands to Jesus. You are the real what a beautiful day it is. What a beautiful day it is.
working for you lift your hands and lift your voice wave those hands and say lord i'm so grateful for your blessings oh jesus thank you thank you el shaddai thank you jehovah nisi thank you jehovah elohim shekinah thank you you deserve this worship you deserve me God thank you for having me hallelujah well clap your hands and give the Lord a praise and with your two hands give somebody high five and tell them it's good to have you it's good to have you it's good to have you hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody's going to preach today. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil your mood. Just, just act like you didn't hear what I said. So, greet somebody one more time. Ask them how they are doing, how they are feeling. If they heard what the man of God said, how are you feeling? Are you ready to preach? Ask them, are you ready to preach? Ask the person for me with confidence. Ask them, are you ready to preach tonight? Please, if anybody told you they are ready, lift your hands and let me see. Somebody told you they are ready to preach. She's ready. She's ready. Okay. He's ready to preach. So, okay, so you guys are scared. You are afraid. You have fear. You are shaking. You literally tremble. You shock. You're surprised. In fact, put the shock and surprise. You are shocked price to stand here and be preaching. That means you have to really place higher honor for those who stand here for even one minute. But you know, we will never see the true honor 
on, until you come and stand here and feel the pressure. So what about today? We just use one hour. Everybody come and stand here and say something. I mean, come on. If you don't have anything to say, if you don't have any preaching to preach, my name is Susan So. I come from Brampton. Uh, I have two children. I'm married or I'm not married. I work here. I'm not working. My life is fine. My life is not fine. What about that? We can try. I want everybody to feel the pressure. Bob, I want everybody here to feel the pressure a little bit. Okay. Now take your Bible. Let's do that quickly. After the Bible, then we, we begin to... And mark those who are coming late for me also. They will start with us. Nothing is impossible. shout a very big God bless you towards mama <laughs> hallelujah all right take your seat and let us begin interesting which row is ready which which area you can just lift your hands if your row is ready I will not call you I will just call somebody around the area and if you don't lift up your hands to our the, the, okay, the row is fine. It's ready, eh? Okay. Since you came late, you and your mother, so why don't you guys, the two of you, start first? <laughs> oh, yeah? She said she'll preach. <laughs> All right. I want to speak to you what will not allow cares to prevail. You know what I mean? It doesn't look like God sent me to you. What is that thing that doesn't allow cares to work against somebody? First, let's define the power and the manifestation of curses. Number one, curse is just the opposite of a blessing. It means that anybody that walks forward, you alone, you will start walk back, walking backwards. Curse, when a man is operating under curse, it means that your heavens are closed. Instead of rain, you receive dust. When the heavens are closed, it means that you will not see productivity because it must rain first for everything or anything planted to grow. As yes, a matter of fact, a man whose life is cares is a man whose speed and forwardness has been removed from their life. It means that your only movement in life is always backwards. You cannot move forward. A curse is the only thing that separates a man who is not productive from those who are productive. When a man is cares, a curse is not only for you. It's a generational house built for the next generation to come. I lift my hands and I declare any man and any woman here that anybody have cursed you, let the curse be broken today. The Bible says, how can I curse whom the Lord has blessed? I want to tell you something. Anybody here that have, they have experienced curses, there are four levels of curses. Number one, there is a soft curse that has been produced over a man's life. He is suffering, but he doesn't see his suffering. Yes. He is going through something, but he doesn't see it. It's also a curse. Because if you see it, you break it. So it is called the invisible hardship. First case. Invisible hardship. These are the places where people ask themselves, but me alone, why? Why things are not working for me? At the same breath, these people will think that the way they are living is how God created them. Yeah, everybody is sick. Everybody have their own sickness. Me, in our house, our sickness is this. Me, in my family, this is what happened. Because it is a kind of a case 
that has been made to be familiar with them. Number two cares. A cares that provoke obstacles. Everything you do, you will get hindrances. Everything you do. Anywhere you go, somebody will block you. Somebody will step ahead of you. Something will stop working. The fridge that work for people, they give it to you, the fridge gets spoiled. Fridge must produce cold. Only you fridge produce hot. Your air condition produce hot. Air condition. Only you. You can be walking in the air condition house, but you are sweating. You are because the case is so evidence. There is something about her. See, somebody can say this one. There is something about her. I don't feel it. I don't feel good. That is also a sign of case. Yeah. It is a case called the case of rejection. So the, the first one is the invisible barrier, obstacles, and the third one is called the case of rejection. Everybody rejects you, including your own mother. Ah, how can you take a lawyer and you are paying the lawyer and the lawyer will now speak as, as if he is joining your enemy to fight you? Listen to this very carefully. Those of you who have um, cases like um, medic insurance and stuff, the lawyer said, I'll fight it. I'll fight it. After seven years, you talk to them and say, ah, I think you should just settle, settle for 50,000. And guess what? The 50,000, his own is 45,000. There is another medical for 4,000. Yours is 1,000. But that 1,000 even, there is another bill. I declare. Mention the name of the case I called. I can't hear you. Mention it. I, see, Here it is. Mama, that is the type of case that comes eh? It comes in your life. Even the church you go, you are rejected. Go and ask a man called Cain. He was rejected. God, listen, trace the life of Saul. The life of Saul. Saul, life, the family of Saul, Face that type, that type of case I'm talking about. So in the first Samuel chapter 15, the Lord came to Saul and said, I have rejected you. The thing was in the house to the point that God himself decided to reject a man. I pray for you. Amen. Whatever you are dealing with, may it not be a case. Yes. And any type of case that has caused rejection, money if you knows that they don't want to come to you. Money. Paper. Paper. Sir, it is not the will of God. You see, if you read Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 27, it says, and God created man and said, have dominion, replenish the earth. It's never the will of God for any woman to be single. Never the will of God for any man to be single. Hmm? Now, in the process of time, the Bible said, and Jesus said to them, in the beginning, it was not so. But it said, because of the hardness of the heart of man, some are born like that. So, we were not created like that. But men has born us like that because it is in a man. Now, we have to replenish. But you can come to a place in your life where the spirit of curse is so strong on you. Where people produce, you will not produce. It is called barrenness. That is the next case. So, rejection comes and barrenness also follows. Five types of barrenness. Of course, number one is very common. We know the barrenness of the womb. You are not productive. And you know, the sadness of this is that that same eggs that enter into your womb, that does not conceive in your womb, they can put it in a bottle and it will conceive. Ask people who have gone and done this. What's the name of that thing again? IVF. He's so painful. I heard. I've not tried before. I heard. It's so painful. It's so painful. And the painful side of this is that when you receive it, your confidence level rises. But your waiting period is a crisis. So you rise, but you have crisis. The Lord told me that that's what he's dealing with the church today. Dealing with the, with the different... Because see... If right now, as you look up and say, hey, come. Who is coming? Hey, come, come to me. 
I'm calling you. Who is coming? No. So you cannot break just any curse. Every spirit has a name. You must address the spirit by name. That is the reason why the Bible says he gave us a name above all names. By the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. In Colossians chapter 1, he says even the spirit, the things that are there and that which are to come and that which are named. Which means that if there is no body and no spirit and no forces that can operate without a name. That means if you are dealing with something and you are ignorant of the name, you are in trouble. Wow. I prophesy. You, you, may not even, you may not even see it in a dream, eh? But you'll be praying, and a certain name will come, Leviata spirit. A certain name will come, Marine spirit. A certain name will come, River spirit. A certain name will come, the spirit of Azazel. You will begin to hear names. Receive that anointing in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? So dealing with this kind of spirit will frustrate you. Barrenness. Number two, the barrenness of the hand. When you touch things, it dies. Your hand is a killer. Men are putting ring on women's finger and they lost their job. They lost everything, including their house. Today they live in their car. The same thing. Vice versa. A woman married a man. That is how the woman started going now. She never resurrected again. She died. Look at our own mother in faith, Catherine Coma. Her name was everywhere until she married. A man took her away. At a point when people are going to even support her, the man will say she's not there. At the last part of her life, people even couldn't witness her. Because of somebody who came. The curse of bringing somebody into your life to diminish your destiny. Shall break by fire three times. Break by Break by the curse that turn conversation to confusion. You'll be shocked that you were all laughing. It tends to be battle. You, you did not even mean to fight. You were just asking a simple direction. That's how they insulted you. Because there is a curse of confusion following your life. In Genesis chapter 4, when men fell and can kill Abel, he said, you are cursed. This mark will follow you. So there is a mark that will follow a person. Now, can I add this into it? A case of being vagabond. Don't have a house. You can't have a place. A case of being fugitive. So you are vagabond, you are fugitive. It's not the same thing that followed the man called Moses. It was a fugitive. He, 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 he left the kingdom. It was not him that wanted to go. Something in the family that doesn't allow the people of Israel to dwell in a place. The spirit of Levi and Levi. The mother was a Levi. The father was a Levi. They came together and produced a Levi's son. And both cases from both houses start operating in his life. What did the father say? Because he said, Oh Levi, thou art the excellence of my life. The, the strength. You are everything I want. Oh Levi, in cruelty you kill men. Your anger will, your anger will put you into trouble. Nobody dealt with it. Sit down, let me talk to you. Nobody dealt with that issue. They left it like that. You see, my biggest problem with these things that happen around is that the issue that people don't deal with, they cause a problem and they go. And people who are innocent come and pay for the price. He said, can you put it for me? Genesis chapter 49. Out of your anger, you kill men. You slew men. You destroy men. Out of your anger. And he said, may my, my, may my spirit not assemble with you. He said, Simeon and Levi are brothers, instrument of cruelty. Are, are in your, huh? And are in their habitations. Come on. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. Come not thou into their Come secrets. Not, my, not into thy secrets. Unto their assembly. Uh -huh. Mine honor be not thou united. They cast what provoke fathers. Sir, there are some men of God, they will never get a spiritual father. They have anointing by their case. If a father can come into their life, they will use their own mouth to destroy the father and the father will leave. There are some people who never have a father and a mother as they live on the earth. Yeah. Because there is something from a father and a mother that everybody needs. That you may live long. Longevity is connected to spiritual father. And another thing, the way you are 
Your sexuality in life determines your spirituality in destiny. There are people who come into your life eh, and come and sleep with you just to mess your atmosphere. It is an atmosphere they build. Why is it that when the children of Israel got to a place where they couldn't curse them, the prophet called the king and advised him and said, you forget about these guys. He built seven altars. Watch how they built it. They brought him and then the children of Israel were very far. Probably where the camera woman is standing. And then he, he said, okay, build me an altar. So they built an altar. He poured like basin on the altar and said, no, no, this altar is too far from them. Bring it closer. They brought it closer. He said, it's too far. Bring. So when he came closer, then he really saw them well. He said, hey, how can I curse whom God have not cursed? See, I wish my life is like them. So the king said, how do you tell me to build seven altars? Numbers 22, Numbers 24. How do you tell me to build seven altars and you cannot curse them? You've wasted them all my, my sacrifice. Say, listen, can I talk to you? I'm going to tell you a secret. These children, you can't fight them. Allow the mobitis who are prostitutes, the women who have different, different relationships. Let them enter into them and sleep with them. When they sleep with them, they will weaken the foundation of their spirituality because your sexuality is about your spirituality. You hear anybody come into your life, you want to sleep with them and prove them you love them. You have messed up your spirituality for, for a long time. So they destroyed that when they came into their life. And the show of Israel was frustrated. Their destiny started falling apart because somebody has penetrated in the atmosphere. Dealing with this spirit, you need a certain level of grace to, to, to be able to stand and tell the devil that, ha, I have known what brought my father's house down. I know what brought my mother's house down. Family, hear this. You, you must conquer the spirit of barrenness from the source of your feet. There are people, they step into a place, everything will die. How somebody stepped into somebody's life and prosperity came into their lives. There are some people, people cannot identify that. Oh, that woman, when I started working with her, everything is working for me. Everybody has said to you that, ah, I don't know. You keep on hearing this thing. That, ah, I was doing well before I saw you. I was doing well before I saw you. And you're not taking it serious. I was doing well before I saw you. And you, you know that nothing is going on with you. People who decide to help you, they will run out of help because of you. Because your ground is spoiled. Let me show you another sign. You can have many, plenty ideas. Your ideas are plenty. But the moment you sit down with somebody and you want to share the idea, then you forget the ideas. There's a strong atmosphere that kills the power of ideas. That's why you must appreciate a blessing. What must you appreciate? Yes. I can't hear you. What must you appreciate? Yes. I want to give you the foundation of a curse so you understand that when somebody curses you, don't just go and say, me, it will not work. Who are you? My dear, they are nobody. But they are principality waiting for words. Yeah. They have been waiting for a long time. Nobody has cursed you. So they follow you and they use your own character and attitude to curse you. Can I tell you something? Many men of God have wasted many people's life. Pastors. Yes. Many people, many fathers and many mothers. So, you see, let me tell you why curse works faster out of the source of life. Curse, it works faster out of the source of life. Life. The womb, this womb that somebody came out of, if your mother hit the stomach, say, you will not make it. What you have done to me? My dear, go and beg her. Beg her and let her lay hands on your head and touch the same womb and say, may the womb, the, the womb you came from bless you. Because that they are nine months and they are pushing hours. It's a trouble on its own. And you fight your wife, don't let her kiss you. Your wife. Mm -mm. Very dangerous. Am I teaching somebody here? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to tell you that, you see, the blessing, is not that the blessing is not there, but the volume of your curse must match the volume of your blessing. The source. The source. And if you're not very careful, our mothers, they will deal with you. Look, you can be here sending your mother money and she will call you and say, nobody's helping me. If you even give them a dime, it's not it's sufficient for them. 
Because they believe that you are making it and they must make it like you. <clears throat> but they don't know that the shoe you are putting on is 2001. It's just that God has helped you that your feet is not growing. <laughs> but I combine the grace in this house and I command anyone who is walking in curse, let God push the curse away from you. Push it away from your family. Push it away from your finance. Somebody lift your voice and say, I am blessed. Put your things down and let's pray for just two minutes. Clap your hands. Any case that have, you've heard it in your ears, you've saw in your dream, you heard that people are going through, clap your hands, smash it, destroy it. Why can't you get to the place where you have to get to? Apalia nalosa. Ekapali kata. Shapeli apania. Bales around your life. Deaths around your life. Break the curses. Break the curses. Break the curses. If any man have cursed me secretly, if any woman have cursed me secretly, if I've done anything to a man of God who cursed me secretly, today I appeal to the higher blood and I ask for forgiveness. God mercy. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Say, I'm dealing with all the cases. Say, I'm dealing with all the cases provoked against my life. Amen. So we have the case of the hand, the case of the womb, the case of the feet, and the case of the mind. Empty head. Empty head. You never have anything to say. You fail in everything you do. You are not able to produce anything. What number are we? Number seven? You are five. Okay. Six. Whatever number you are, take it. Me, I should be standing here and God is using me. I will work hard and come and stand here and you write what you want and you'll be telling me you are six, you are five. Take whatever you have. <laughs> Maybe what you are dealing with is the number you have, so take it. I will not kill myself. The last curse is the curse of the atmosphere. The earth that opened its mouth and swallowed the blood of your brother has been cursed. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis 4, 10 to 12. The Lord commanded that the land would be hard. See, you can leave from Africa and go to anywhere in this world. You'll find the, des- the, the dust. you find it. Ah, uh, and he said another thing. Can I add that one? Then we begin to pray. The curse of sweating. He said you would toil. By your sweat you shall eat. For some reason, some people, until you sweat, you will never. This Canada, you are here. <laughs> Some people just went to the airport and they, they were just there. They didn't even have a di- ticket. Somebody came to them and, and, and bought them first class. You have to go and pass all the way in Brazil. At a point, they were calling you different names. You've gone through by, and then you walk through the Amazon, the forest. You've, you've tested all temperature. Right now, your body is used to every place because you have been in the cold, you have been in the hot, you have been in the tropical. Is, is you yourself at a point you don't even know where you are. You sweat before you go to the place. Look at one relationship. You, when you see this guy and you look at yourself, you know that that is not your, is, 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 you are not his type. But look at the way you talk. Every money you have, I've received my payroll, I put it in account just to keep him. Look at the way they train with you like a boxing something. He to pa 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 pa. It's a serious thing. Abuse. They abuse you verbally. Hey, me, I don't have anywhere to go. You want to kill me, kill me. Then they will go and buy flour and they'll bring you flour. Say, my husband, he loves me or he bought me flour. One day you, your casket will receive the flour. You keep on. Now, the curse of working through sweat, that is very dangerous because... It is a curse 
that produce hardship, sorrows, sadness, and it will make sure you're never joyful, never settle in life. Proverbs chapter 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich. He maketh rich. And he addeth no sorrow. He adds no sorrows to it. It is the blessing. See, one of the things that cancel all these cases is called blessings. That thing that we don't value. That thing we don't value. You see, people don't value blessings to the point that when somebody asks you, where is the washroom? The washroom is here. He says, God bless you. You use it anyhow. So you have no value to the blessing. But that blessing... It is that which take the first case in the Bible, the first case of Genesis chapter 3, the sorrow, the sweat, the first case. The word blessing takes the first case away. The first case. The second case is a case of barrenness. The book of Exodus 23, verse 25. And there is, you see, I want to say this. And I, anytime I preach and I get to this kind of terms, I must. Take time and speak it because we have a lot of preachers who are confusing people. Confused preachers are producing confused children and confused church members. Now, look at the book of Exodus. Read it for me. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless you. He shall bless you. Now, when you hear that, the first thing is that, why must I serve before? It sounds like a law. I have to serve him and get it. It's not a law. It's a condition. It's a condition. Because before you become God's agent... You have to become his servant. He gain authority over you. Then he have the power over you so that the devil have no power to accuse you. Now I want to tell you this. Then this doesn't give you license to do what you want to do, okay? Now, you are God's servant. Outside people can judge you. But really truly, they can't judge you. They don't have power over you. He said, who are you to judge another man's servant? If I was appointed by the church members to become their pastor, then the church members can now judge me because I am employed. I've been chosen by them. They weigh me and took, God didn't send me to them. But if I am a type of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15, I will give you pastors. And if God is the one that gave me, that means I am God's servant. The devil himself cannot accuse me. He, the Bible doesn't give him permission. It's beyond his power to accuse. Now, that's the reason why when somebody becomes a church member, if you check, the routine of the church is that the moment you become a church member, we want you to become a church worker. Because a member is not a servant. There are members here. There are some members here. If they do it, I will not say it. If they put any dress, I will not say it. Because they are members of the church. There is difference between the members of the church and the workers of the church. So you see that when workers, we, I am coming, there is a way workers behave when I'm coming. When I'm coming and there is a member, there is a way they behave. They are totally different. Because the worker have seen a side the member have not seen. The reason is because I have the ability to be able to help, train, and do what God wants you to do. But the member... He has to just take it if he wants it or not. Although they are all here, nobody is forced to take any law or anything from me. Now, because of this, it's very difficult for people who are not, when they get saved and they don't avail themselves as tools in the hands of God, it's very difficult for God to, to snatch them from the enemy or rescue them from perishing because they are in God but they are not active to God. Now, you cannot believe in the person of God and not believe in his practice. If you believe in the person of God, you must believe in his practice. That is why he said, be holy for I am holy. You believe in him, fine, but you have to practice. Now, it is when you practice, you prosper. It's not when you pray. Believe in his personality. That release the practiceness or the practical side of him. And then you begin to experience the prosperity of him. 
our problem is very one. We believe in his personality, but we don't, we don't want to practice him. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah, now, Hindus, Hare Krishnas, and people who are in a dimension, and I say dimension because of the manifestation of what they do. Uh, they, they, they are practical in their service. Between them and us, we are, we are charismatic. Okay? We are charismatic. And the reason why we are charismatic is because we believe that God lives in the realm of theocracy. And that word theocracy means he does whatever he wants to do at any time he wants to do it and nobody can question him. And so when we come into him, we have that same idea that he that the son of God said free is free indeed and nobody can control me. I can just be in the church. Everybody stand up and I'm sitting there. Nobody can control me. I can decide to lift my hands and it doesn't matter. But when you go to the Hindu temple or the Muslim temples, the moment you go there, you, you hear them, Allah wa kubaru. Everybody will put their head on the ground. But check the church. When we lift our hands, somebody sitting down. Because we believe in the theocracy mentality. So we are not powerful and effective because we are not practical people. Now, the only way we are practical is when we are charismatic. And the word charismatic is because you want to impress somebody. So when the man of God is coming in, everybody lift their hands and they are worshipping. No, you are not worshipping because you are practical. You are worshipping because you are charismatic. There is something in you that makes you want to act what you think you believe. But you don't really act what you think you believe when nobody's watching you. You are not who you are when everybody's watching. You are who you are when nobody's watching. Am I communicating to somebody? So it will be very difficult if you don't understand this process. You'll be waiting on God to use you, but you will pass you by. Because there is nothing of him in you. And Satan becomes your friend regardless of all the tongues you speak in. The reason is because John 10, 30, for the king of the prince of this world cometh, but there's nothing in me but you. You believe in God, but you act like the devil. So you have the practical side of the devil, but you don't have the practical side of God. Now, what do you think you are doing when you are gossiping somebody? What do you think you are doing? What do you think you are doing when you are laughing with somebody but in your head, you have, you have hate for them? What do you think you are doing when you love the prophet and don't love the wife? What do you think you are doing when you are gossiping and speaking about people? It is the devil who does that. He laughs with us. That's why I said, learn how to deal with witches. In the morning, they are very nice. Before they sleep, they are very nice. But when they sleep, in other words, there are people who act very nice when they are with you. But behind you, there are people who call Papa prophet. Oh, it's my Papa. Oh, that Kofi, Kofi's church. Now there is a, there is a nature of people. Now, the moment God's authority can take care of you, the devil authority is over you. And the same thing, the devil will tell God. Why do you want to save him? She and he is my servant. Is it not in your word that who can judge another man's servant? They are mine. So rebellious heart. That thing that brought the devil down. Listen. Rebellion was found in the devil. Lucifer was not a bad thing like that though. He said until iniquity, Ezekiel 28, until iniquity was found in you. Pride was there. Iniquity came. Then he became a trafficker. Yeah. He said, because of the magnitude of the trafficking of your merchandise. So all this kind of transactions that happens in the church, all this thing, you know, um, you know, give me $5,000. There is a direction. I have to come to your house and pull something. All these things are trafficking. Okay? Jesus one day came on earth and he saw the sign of trafficking in the church where they are exchanging coins. Lucifer came to church and he was exchanging coins. Hmm. That's the reason why there was a time ago where people were sending applications. You want to sell here, you want to sell here, you want to sell here. And what that thing mounts up to is that people's conscience, the conscience and their mindset become a prophet. And that's the reason why God is very careful to give you gifts. Because there are places that people are inviting me. Whatever amount I mention, they need me so bad that they will pay. No, no, don't think because I have nine kids, so my rate has gone down. No, don't, no, don't. No, no. Okay, no. 
Never. Don't think because of the gray, something is, no, something is deceiving you. I'm still on demand. Seriously. On a higher level. But anyway, come back here. Now, you need to be a practical believer. Believe in this person. Practice him. Then you'll prosper. Blessing. So we stand here and we say, okay, God bless everybody. May the Lord release a special blessing on you. What is the blessing? Blessing is one. Psalm 1. Bless is the man. So bless is not everybody. Bless are not the men. Bless is the man. So there are people who can stand, but God only will give the blessing to one. So blessing is not for all. Family, hear me. Today I want to put you on a race. When you hear where there is a blessing, rush first before somebody got there. Somebody gets there. Because somebody can take the blessing and you think you can also receive yours. I will not lie to you. Not everybody here receive blessing when I say you are blessed. I will not lie to you. Let go, pay your eyes. Be blessed. There are some people, they receive it. But there are some people, even though they are hungry to receive it, it is finished. But it is only the blessing from God that hasn't finished. But the blessing from us finishes. We have doses of the blessings. The blessings. The Lord knows the amount of people that needs to be blessed. Let me give you scripture so that you will, you will get it. Genesis chapter. Just open Genesis. You'll find it. Are you there? Read it. You'll find it there. <laughs> open Genesis. Are you not open Genesis? You'll find it there. I was just talking about blessings. You should be able to see it. Genesis. You are checking your phone. Some of you, eh, <laughs> I heard a story and I think it's very funny, but it's very true. Some of you, when we go to heaven, you'll be very, very disappointed. You'll be very shocked, I'm telling you. When you get to heaven, imagine that you have got, to, got into heaven and then you meet um, somebody like Obadiah. And Obadiah says, how are you doing? He says, I'm doing very well. He says, did you really like my book? Says, book. book and then so this prophet jeremiah jeremiah said hey how are you doing did you really like my book said, your book because you never read them you never read your books i believe the famous person you would have you would, you would love to meet that you would have said yes i read your book will be very far he'll be where the singers are he's a choir leader david because of your sins, you always want to read Psalm 51. <laughs> David will never meet you first. He will be very far. Because as for David, you say, oh, I, I, I read it. <laughs> so you even quote from Psalm 51. Genesis 27, 38. And Esau said unto his father. And Esau said to his father. Has thou but one blessing? Please, uh, do you have only one blessing? Do you have only one blessing? Why have you let me stand here and be begging and crying? And Do you only have one blessing? Papa, don't do that. Don't do that. I suffered. I went very far to go and find you food. Do you have any other blessing? And look at what he said to him. Bless me, even me also. Bless me, even me. You just, if you don't have any, just bless me, me. Just use me and bless me as your firstborn. And hear him. And Esau lifted up his voice. He lifted his voice. And wept. And wept. And Isaac his father. And Isaac his father. Answered and said unto him. And answered and said to him. Behold. Behold. Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Uh -huh. And of the dew of heaven. Uh -huh. From above. Uh -huh. And by thy sword shalt thou live. So by your sword thou shalt live. You will live from mouth, from hand to mouth. You will borrow and be paying later. I'm not going to let, I'm not going to rehold anything from you. If you want, you will get it. But you will never be able to meet your mortgage. You always be late. Yeah, your car, you, they, will, they will take your car away from you. They will embarrass you. But you will recover the car. I lift my hands by the reason of a sent word to you. May this case never be your portion. Yeah. My dear, if I were to be you, I would have be the first one to shout amen for the one standing close to me to fall. Yeah. Okay. 
because he was fighting for one blessing. He said, just give me one blessing. And the father said, you shall dwell among the fatness of the earth. But the fatness of the earth is not going to help you by your sword. You always have to find a way to live. You have to find a way to survive. Sit down. And he said something to him. He said, by your sword, you shall live. It's not a good thing to arrive late. It's not what? A good thing to arrive late. I feel like every one of you, I want you to connect to this. We are going to plant a special seed for everybody in this house. May bills never ruin your destiny. May you not own people in debts for people to take advantage of you. And may your children never go into slavery because there is debt in the house. Oh, I pray that may your children never be deprived from the games they should play, the joy they should have, the happiness they should have, because there is too much of curse that causes financial hardship in your family. May God let it pass by you. Take any seed, take any seed. And please, whilst you are doing this, be praying. You will hear God telling you what you should be working against. Everyone watching, wherever you are watching, I want you to do it and begin to pray. Any curse of death. Any case of embarrassment, financial embarrassment, borrowing spirits, the spirit that will let you borrow or sell, sell something that should have been kept, you will sell it. I rebuke it. I refuse it. I, I denounce it. The swallowing spirit that swallow men and women in the form of case. Now, as you are standing there, can you pick your books so that I can be teaching together? Oh, how are you going to leave this line? Because you don't want to lose your place. Anyway, catch it. Find a way to retain it. So the blessing, the blessing, the blessing is one. See, your brother have already taken the blessing. May another man not take your blessing. I shared with you the last time where uh, my mother is the last family, the last born of the whole family. Prospered, broke through every aspect of her life. Because she always will go to the grandfather, which is my grandfather, and serve her father food, and the father bless her. Most of the times, the father have told her that as for your senior sister, she never comes here. What is wrong with that, your sister? So the last days that my grandfather was about to depart, he blessed my mother and said, you will have a husband. You will build a house. You will have money. You will do well. But as for your other sister, she will never be productive. When she said it, when he said it, he gave up his ghost. That, that um, auntie, or whatever she is, has never attained to anything. Not even a man has showed up in her life. She never has a house. She never has anything. Now imagine, at this age of her life, there is nobody who is, uh, who is um, taking care of her. How will she sustain and leave. In the days of darkness, the Lord will give you light. Yeah. I am preaching with you. I say God will give you light. Yeah. I say God will give you light. Yeah. The blessing. The blessing. It's a bless is the man, Psalm 1. Bless is the man, not the man. Man. There must be one career of a blessing. And I see it is you. Amen. Look at your hands. Can't you see the house? See the properties. See the opportunities. See the stadiums filled with people. And you are the one holding. Do you see the mic in your hands? And you are worshipping the Lord. And people are, you are testifying. How the Lord has broken you through. I prophesy that will be your portion. Amen. May what I said now cancel every negative things that anyone have said to you. Amen. That you are even saying to yourself. May what I just pronounce now cancel every words of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are useful. Amen. You are profitable. Amen. You are helpful. Amen. You are needed. Amen. You are loved. Amen. You will be comforted. Amen. You will prosper. 
you will be established Amen. you will exploit Amen. you will expand Amen. and you will increase Amen. take your seat I feel like prophesying this one nobody here will a sharp object cut your body Amen. any organs that the enemy have said that they should replace it with a metal or replace it with somebody's kidney ah I pray, may the Lord preserve you in the name of Jesus. I say, may God preserve you in the name of Jesus. Sit down. This your mind will be very productive. You will have ideas, you will have money yielding ideas. You will, you will think one and it will make factories. People will come from the east, the north, the south, and the west. They will come and tap into what God has given to you. They will see that this is not a normal thing. May God give you the demand of men. Amen. Amen. Have you not seen that there is a shift in this world? I'm not saying there is anything bad with what happened yesterday. The eclipse. But can you imagine that people are running towards where darkness is coming? People drove all the way to go and see darkness covering light. That is how this world has moved. We love darkness than light. We love things that will destroy than things that will build. People were taking pictures, but nobody have searched to check who created that. How that thing was made. Will people troop into churches to read about that? That there was also a man who also spoke that darkness will not come and darkness did not come and it affected a month in the whole month. Come back to what I'm preaching. I just was telling you something quick. Blessed is the man. Uh -huh, read it. Blessed is the man. Somebody say, I'm the man. I'm the man. Oh, are you afraid? Say, I am the man. I am the man. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the council. So the first one is that for you to be blessed, you have to learn how to walk. You can't be blessed if you don't know how to walk, where to walk, who to walk with, when to walk. You have to know it. Your blessing is connected to your walking. Family, hear me. Hear me. Learn how to walk into church when you are in time of trouble without a church service. Create a walking path. Oh, God. Create a walking path. Take off from work and declare that this day is my day off and my day on before God. And learn how to walk into the church when nobody is here and create your own atmosphere and tell God, my story must change now. Yeah. Don't wait and come into service in your convenience time. It is convenient for you, but it's not for your destiny. Learn how to do it. Walk. Somebody say, my feet, my feet. Must, walk must walk into goodness and into the house of the Lord. Walking is part of it. Learn how to walk in prayer. Walk in worship. Learn how to walk. Bless is a man. Who walk now? Another thing you also have to understand is that the best blessing is the counsel people you sit with, the counsel you take. There, see, there is difference between advice and counsel. Advice is the process of giving information. Counsel is evaluating the information and acting on what you evaluated. So there are people who are, who are acting based on people's counsel. I've seen it before. When people have come to a place where people have advised them that they pray too much. Ah, you are praying too much. If God will hear you, he will hear you once. Even if you check the book of Matthew, the Bible says when you pray, do not let anybody hear. And they cancel you wrongly. So now you memo in your, in, your, in, your, in your head. Say, God is in you. And they can teach you that God is in you. So whenever you are talking, he hears it. Why did he say, shout aloud? Why did he say, oh Zion, shout aloud? Your shout is needed for your change. There are times when you're walking around Jericho, you can be quiet. If you are walking around it, you can be quiet. But if you want to walk into it, you must shout. 
we are quiet walking around Jericho but if you want to enter into your destiny you have to learn how to shout you are too much of a lady in this church learn how to shout you are too much a gentleman here learn how to shout they are still not shouting I say shout learn how to shout I say you got to learn how to do what somebody say shout somebody say shout and the walls fell flat because they used their voice listen 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 to me listen learn how to use what will not cost you your voice doesn't cost your pocket nobody will give you bail after that because every man's destiny is connected to the rescuing voice you have to shout aloud because if you don't shout you can't be rescued so today on behalf of yourself and your family give the lord a help give the lord a help I say, give the Lord the hey! You've got to learn how to do it better. Hey! That job is released. Shout it again. Hey! That man has found you. Shout it again. Hey! That money is released. Shout it again. Keep this volume always. I've given you a secret. Keep it when you come to church. If people sit around you and they are quiet, they are walking around their Jericho. They don't want to enter their Jericho. But if you want to enter your Jericho, you got to learn how to. Hey! 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 There are times, eh, when you are going about your life and you look left and right, you look forward and look back, and there is no help for you. Instead of you to cry, lift your voice and do help. What must you do? Let me tell you something. It's only God. It's only God that takes this language and puts it in front of the problem who doesn't want to listen to you. Well, you didn't know what you were doing. There is some financial challenges from today. You will not see it again. Because for so long, you've been quiet for so long. You have watched the marriage of the family going down. You've watched the health of the family going down. You've watched people breaking down. You've watched that trouble for long. But as for this hour, we shout, yes, 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 yes. yes! Why did God? Mitchell, God was having a meeting with Moses and he told Moses to go down. He said, I hear a sound. God is in heaven, he's hearing a sound. When the people were whispering, I'm shocked. The people said, Bring your gold, bring your diamond. They took the ring, they took their diamond. God didn't say anything. They, they made a calf. How long did it take for them to melt the fire, melt their, uh, their gold, and do a calf? And God didn't do anything. But when they finished it and they lift the calf up and the people shouted, God said, Moses, there is a sound that is coming. What type of sound is that? And Moses said, this is a praise. He said, no, 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 no. This is not a praise sound. Something is happening on earth that is very strange. I prophesy. Let your sound provoke judgment against your enemies. Hey! 
Give the Lord a sound in Toronto. Give the Lord a sound in Toronto. The Lord a sound in Toronto. Yes. Numbers chapter 14. In fact, Numbers 12 and 14. He told them, he said, I'm giving you two trumpets. One is silver. Another one is gold. When you use the silver, you will gather the whole children of Israel. But when you use the gold, you will bring the elders. That means there is a sound that attracts the type of help you need. But I don't know about yours. But I know what I need now. I need to just do help. Oh, satire. majority of women and babies listen to me very carefully when they are giving birth they are pushing involve a sound when the baby comes out and the baby doesn't cry they beat the baby not only in africa here they beat the baby because the sign of life is the sound of shout leave the lord and shout yeah. Give the Lord a shout. I want you to shout only for five minutes. Give the Lord a shout. Shout only two minutes. Give the Lord a shout. I know my situation. Give the Lord a shout. Concerning your documents. Concerning your marriage. Concerning your finance. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. I prophesy. Let God take your shout and use it for you. I say, let God take a shout. May He use your shout for you. Let Jehovah take your shout and use it. Let Him take your shout and use it. May He take your shout and use it. Let God take your shout and use it. May He take your shout. And use it for you. Use it for your family. May you take your shout and use it for your house. May God take your shout and open doors for you. May God take your shout. Oh Jesus, bring it to me. Take your shout and put it in your stomach. Take your shout. May God take your shout and favor you. May God take your shout and give you voice. May God take your shout. May God take your shout. May God take your shout. Oh yes. Let God take your shout. And give you grace. Bring it for me. Come and stand here. Lift up your hands. I saw somebody from your mother's house. Holding a knife. Ready to cut you. At first. I saw they are saying that something umbilical cord has a connection, like tying a part of the body that is not right. So they must rush you. They must rush you immediately. And they have to cut you. But the cutting didn't go well. Stretch your hands. What is the doctor telling you? When are you giving birth? What are they telling you? Papa. There's going to be a deliverance for you. Wait. Have they told you anything about the baby yet? They have not told you anything about the baby. But they are going to be prepared. I see they are rushing you. You dream it. What did you dream? I said, because my doctor said, last month he was talking about silks. But um, last two weeks, she said, is said that she induced me or I gave birth to Norma. But the day before yesterday, I dreamt that I was at the delivery room. So as the baby wants to come out, so they rush me back to the shelter for a cessation. See, look at this. She has dreamt what must happen next week. And if she's not spiritual, she will be sitting there that I'll give birth. Did you tell anybody your dream? 
You never told me. You never told anybody your dream. No. But while she was there, I know because of the way she looks, how she's pregnant, she couldn't stand. But she was shouting. And when I saw, I saw like a television, clear. And I saw that they're pushing her. And the Lord said, cancel it because the one who is going to perform the surgery is from her village. She has come. She's, she wants to do it. But today I declare, if you can shout for her, ah, bring her up again. You see, shout for her. Bring her up again. Give a shout. Bring her back again. Something just happened. Give a shout. Hey, bring her again. Shout it. Let me pray for you. I saw somebody have a scissors and it's ready to cut your hair. They want to cut your hair. You have a dream, a terrible dream. And in a dream, you will find that somebody has cut your hair. The person will shave all your hair. The hair stands for glory. Anytime your hair is tempered with, it's your destiny. One. Number two, your strength is being tempered with. But once you started shouting, the person who was sent to cut your hair fell down. The pe- you see? May God let this shout blow your enemies down. Oh, blow your enemies down. Shut him like a believer. Come. What took you to the hospital? What? Pneumonia, pneumonia. Pneumonia. Yeah. I see a stone. Kidney stones. But you see, this lady is standing there holding the tambourine, but she didn't know what the tambourine was doing. Anytime she add the tambourine to her voice, I see the stones are falling. Yeah. Who took it? Where is it? Give it back to her. What she's holding is not a normal tambourine. God is using these instruments as an equipment. Is using it as an equipment to fix your kidneys, fix your kidneys, fix your kidneys. Let the stones out. Somebody give the Lord a shout in this house, young man. Come, come, come. Your father's children, what number are you? Three. Your father's children, how much you say you are? Your father's children, how many children? What number are you? I'm the last born. You are the last born? Yeah. How many are you? Six. You are the last born? Yes. Come and stand. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Lift your hands. There is somebody here. Debts have surrounded you. Everything about you have to own somebody. I declare this shout Whoever debt you are paying in their family is paid off. Ah, ah, break, break, the power of fire. Bring him to me. What work do you do? What work do you do? What's your profession? Not yet. You don't have a profession. I want to pray for you. Okay? I want to pray for you. I see you are not standing in the church. I see him out of the church. But I see the angel of the Lord pull him into the church. Your father go to church. Your father go to church. Yes. Your mother goes to church. Yes. All of them go to church. But you, I see you out of the church. But I see the spirit of the Lord pull you back into the church. The Lord is establishing a new relationship with you. A brand new relationship. Your dreams are going to speak a lot louder. Because God wants to use you. There is an assignment for you. Look, I prophesy, anyone here whom your family member is not in service, who they should have been in church, be your father, your mother, anybody around you, this your shout, pull them in. They come in. Yes! Yeah, man. 
Bring her to me. Bring her to me. Stand here. Stand here. Lift up your hands. When everybody was shouting amen, I saw her soul walking around. Her soul was walking around. And the Lord said, look at her soul. Look at her soul. And I asked the Lord why. He said, they have tried to tame her, to tie her. She will be tied for two years. The plans of the enemy is to tie her for two solid years. And in the two years, she will see herself about 24 times that she is sleeping, but her soul is out of her body. She will come out of the body and look at her body like that and will be walking around. And after two years, the enemy wanted to make her like vegetable. But as she was shouting, the, pop, the people that are around her will tie her. I saw them all running. When you add your voice, thunder will show up in them. The thunder of God will crush them. I preserve you from death. I release you from death. I take you from death. I save you from death. Today is your day of resurrection. Be free. Jesus name. Lift your hands. I prophesy. Most of you, the relationship with God, the place where God placed you at first, you know that he has been looking for you like looking for Adam. Where are you? This is your shout. From this day, anything that covered you and made you not feel the presence of God and caused you to be wondering whether God is still with you, as you shout, let God restore you your hours of revelation. Your hours of fellowship. Your hours of relationship. Yes! Give the Lord a shout that he deserves. Give the Lord a shout that he deserves. Somebody, as you shout your name, did you go on a check? Did you go on a bank account? Confidence show! Miracle arena for all nations. Shout that name. Somebody is writing a check for you. Somebody is transferring money to the account that bears your name. This week, the Lord shall turn the captivity of Zion. And it shall be like a dream. Oh, you will sing the Lord's song. You will shout to the name of the Lord. I declare, anybody whom the enemy have assigned, with sickness, let your loudest shout deliver you. As you shout, may you exit from bad dreams. Any dream that the enemy use against you, may it come to an end as you shout. Anybody that show up in your dream as a dead person, today end that revelation. As you shout, let the fear leave you right now. The Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I double dare you, shout like you have a victory. Run and shout. Shout and run. Somebody jump and shout. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, tower, get ready. Something you think is about to come. Wherever you are in all power, the power of God is about to come down like never before. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the grace of God. It will be your season of revival. Your season of power. If you believe God, give the Lord a shout wherever you are. I feel the Spirit of God. You are walking in restoration. You are not just running. You are running to restoration. You are not just jumping. You are jumping poverty. You are jumping trials. You are jumping confusion. You are jumping death. You are jumping. 
the spirit of last you are jumping it in the name of Jesus jump it out jump it out oh may God take this shout and scatter the enemy out of your life somebody give the Lord a shout Uncle is free. Auntie is free. Your husband is free. Your brothers are free. Your sisters are free. Your generation are free. They will serve the Lord. They will serve God. They will know the true God. They will know that I am that I am. They will know the Savior. If you are believing God for them. Give the Lord a shout and give him a dash. Give the Lord a shout. I said, give the Lord, give the Lord a mighty a shout. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Are you rejoicing? I forget about your problems. Forget about your trials. Forget about your troubles. And give the Lord a shout. Victory today is mine. Uh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. I just say that. God give me heart. I saw this young girl, this young lady here. I saw her holding a light, a light. And she entered into the house with a light. And everybody around who doubted her faith started opening up for her faith. God has to tell you, He has put in a light in you that those who are doubting you in a short time to come, they will bow to the Lord God, they will serve the Lord Jesus. Are you shouting and give the Lord a praise? Yeah. How many people go to church in your family? How many people go to church in your family? No one, just me. No one, just you. Just me. What do they do? Pardon? What do they do? What they they do? don't go to church. What do they do? They're Muslim. They are Muslim. So only you. Only me. Hear me? Write this prophecy down. Write it down. A time is coming. Your mother will be the one. Your father will be the one telling you. Won't you pray for the family? Pray for us. Take that anointing. I feel the Holy Ghost. I got the feelings. Everything's gonna be alright. here for me you are here but I hear what the angel had in the days of Sarah Sarah laughed in the kitchen 
to the point the angel heard it and said, is she laughing my dear there is a miracle coming everybody shall hear of your laughter hey, the holy ghost shed unto me everything is gone Two of them to me. Bring the two of them. Bring the two. Both of you come here. Asha, come here. Bring the Asha. Everything. You shall laugh. You shall laugh. God send your help. Bring it to me here. I hear you. I see an estuary, but I heard your voice, and you are laughing, and you say, Lord, thank you for making me whole. You shall laugh. Yeah. The Holy Ghost said unto me, everything is going to be all. Oh, I've been come here. saw an angel of the Lord lifted you up and I saw you were in the clouds two angels surrounded you and I heard the angels giving you a song there is a song coming from the spirit ah, holy ghost shout unto me everything's gonna be alright holy ghost shout unto me come here yes come yes I don't want the camera don't use the camera don't use the camera Lift your hands. Any attack. Because I saw in the hands of the spirit. They have sent a dog to bite you. But it's a deadly dog. So any type of dog. They want you mad. You didn't get mad. But I said we will deal with you. Because when the dog beat him. His legs. Two legs. Paralyzed. I cast any stronghold. I command. If you shout for him. If you shout. Bring him. Bring him here. Bring him here. I command you go. Bring him here. You that demon. Listen. Something just shocked me. Fire. Come on. Come on. Come on. Leave him. Leave him. Whatever the person I command you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go. Somebody give the Lord a shout for him. Whilst you are shouting. Any brothers are happening. Hey, Kwame, come here. Kwame, come here. Are you working? You are not working. The reason why I ask you is because I saw you have entered into an office, but it's a uniform office. God said, I'm giving you something you don't qualify for. Bring him here. Bring him here. Ayako Dadiba. If you shout today, the Lord will cause you to laugh. Bring down my daughter over there for me. Russia, Russia, you just passed her. Bring her for me. Lift up your hands. The Lord said, I should tell you, He is building a bridge. Every doubt, He is building a bridge. And your own case will be different. Can you give the Lord a shout? You want me to stop the service? Then give the Lord a shout in the building. Saint Anne, come here. Saint Anne, come here. You, you are blessed. But you lift your hands. The Lord said, the spirit of death in your family that has been repeating itself wanted to take the last one but this day once you were shouting the spirit gave up the soul of the person if you shout anybody determined to die let God rebuke them spirit of death give the Lord a shout I say give the Lord give the Lord a shout give the Lord stop looking cute stop looking because your, uh, your problem is ugly. I said stop looking cute. Because your problem is ugly. Give 
give the Lord a shout. Give him a shout like you are crazy. Because after today, he fixed everything. All the fixer is here. The mecca is here. The doer is here. Today is a day of miracles. Because God is the same today. He's the same yesterday. And he will be forever. I believe in miracles. If he did it, he will do it again. I say he will do it again. Give the Lord a shout. Ottawa, get ready. Winnipeg, get ready. Calgary, get ready. Edmonton, get ready. Give the Lord a shout. Bring a bottle. Impartation, take impartation to God be the glory. Everybody, sing it out. The next morning, the Bible said, and God gathered by the east wind 
to the arm length of their shoulder they didn't need to bend down and pick what they would eat it was at their level you will not need a table because the blessing will reach the height of your table I said that level of favor that level of favor that level of opportunity that level of increase the level of speed acceptance access acceleration that God is about to give you you cannot enjoy alone your family will enjoy it they have everybody will enjoy it ah you don't know give the Lord a shout one more time these two people bring them here bring the two people here bring them here quickly bring that two people who came in front here bring them you said something may it increase ah bring her again these people did not just come and give an offering they sent something there was an atmosphere lift your hands hear me hear me everybody in this building you want to ask the Lord one thing let the joy of your salvation be my portion many people have lost the joy of their salvation they are saved but they have no joy lift your hands and begin to ask the Lord let the joy of your salvation come over me lift your voice and pray lift your voice listen minister bring me envelope everyone here um, this Friday to Sunday we'll be just doing a fasting three days Sunday uh, Friday Sunday uh, Friday Saturday and Sunday three days six to six some waves have come and I want the waves to stay are you hearing me sense it now, Friday, everybody, bring the Lord $50. Bring me envelope, please, quickly. Come here and take yours from my hand. Come here. Listen, I'm not giving you envelope. I'm putting Jubilee in your hands. Yeah. Jubilee, Jubilee. There is something called Jubilee. 50 is a Jubilee. And please, when you take it, just begin to pray. Friday. This is not for now. It's for Friday. Unless you are not here Friday, then you can do it now. But it's for Friday. It's for Friday. Jubilee. Finally, you have arrived at the place where you must jubilate. Amen. Those who are watching, be part of a jubilee. Can you move that song? It's a good one.
Stretch your hand. Please. If you are, you are living. Business people, you are living, you are renting from somebody. You know that if you shout, it will be a problem. Go to your car. Close your door. Hey! When it is overwhelming to you, instead of you to cry and be sad, shout it off and God will take it and throw it at your enemies. Yes! My God, give me oil. Look, if you have eyes and you know how far your enemies have fled, there were four lepers. They didn't even shout. They were walking. And God made their feet like a feet of army. And their enemies, they didn't have any preacher. They were lepers. So there were no preacher. They, were, they didn't have a prophet. But one person said, if we stay here, we die. If we go, we, go, we die. Let's make a move. Now, you have made too much move. They made only one move. They, you, you made many moves. Their one move brought the victory. I am glad. You can now go and look for your wedding gown. Look for the size of your ring. Look for your new apartment. Plan your own job. Plan your own opportunity. Because this loud shout is establishing the prophecy. You shall recover. You have recovered. You have recovered. Yes! No sickness will enter into that house. No death will enter to that house. No death will enter to Miracle Arena. Look at three people and look at three people and tell them it's done. It's done and cleared. It's done and settled. Now take your offering and come and shake the hands of the prophet. Take your offering. I need about 20 people. Just give 20 dollars. 20. Only 20 of you. Come here quickly. 20. Only 20. You know what you're going to use this all you to do? Touch your stomach. Touch your hands. Anoint your feet. And tell yourself barrenness. That which the prophet mentioned. It's not my portion. Just make sure. Anoint your feet. Don't be anointing your feet and then you finish. You forgot that you came here because of $20. Oh. And put the offering on the altar. Walk in a new level. Blessed is the man who walketh not. I did not even finish Psalm 91. Psalm 21. I, Psalm 1. I didn't finish it. No, no, I didn't finish it. It was not done. I didn't finish it. $20. You, you will see him in Jesus' name. You see? $10. Come. Take your offering and come. Shake your head because I'm living right after this. <laughs>